This is emergence, people. We all have experiences in our lives that help us emerge. Sometimes they're little things, sometimes they're quite dramatic and painful. And as I try to find myself reconnecting to the source, to the one, to God, you feel it sometimes in these moments of emerging. And this is, this is a story and a poem about one such experience that I had after I crashed my car butt naked into a wall. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <clears throat> I'm caught in a timeless moment. Wind is rushing past me as I run. I'm moving so fast and traveling so slow. The air is cool on my naked body, but I cannot feel a thing. I look to the sky and it's on fire with what look like the 4th of July fireworks, only stars and galaxies. I can see holes in space, the rips in time, where the boundaries of this reality melt into the next. It's so beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. I'm still running. How long has it been? Forever, it seems. The full moon. You can see, uh, like the ghost of the sun, it stands in the sky, illuminating the world like a big graveyard. It's so dead. But I can see it now clearer than I've ever been able to see it in my entire life. And it's not really what it seems. Yeah. I reach a bend in the road now, and I take a left, heading for my imminent doom. And I decide to see how fast I can run. And suddenly, I become one with the wind, soaring and roaring past everything like some exploding rocket heading for its Extinction. Pure ecstasy. And for what seems like an instant and an eternity, I reach another bend in the road. And this time it's a crossroad. Which path do I take? And I choose to go home. Under the underpass and onto the on-ramp. I finally stop running and I slow down. This and then it starts to hit me like a million tons of brick. I start traveling, I go back. I go back farther than I even knew existed. So far into the past, so far, and I see myself. I re-experience everything that my soul has experienced in its entire existence up to this point. I'm traveling so fast, it's like I'm traveling at light speed. Everything is moving, everything is this blur of, of nothing and everything just forming into itself. Just images and memories and experiences and feelings and thoughts. It, it's so much, it's amazing that I don't just explode. And there's so much that I, I could never explain. Not to you because you wouldn't understand. And after infinity has passed, infinity, <coughs> I look to the sky again, and there are more holes and more rips in time, more galaxies and stars than ever before. So beautiful. And now trucks are whizzing by me at 60 miles an hour, less than three feet away honking their horns to warn me, but I paid no attention. They can't see me. Should I show them? Should I walk onto the highway and die again? 
step in front of the semi truck? Or would I even die at all? No, it would distract me. I'm going home. And so on I walk and on I walk. Trucks still whizzing by me. I can feel the force of the air as they try to suck me in. But I'm strong and I hold my ground. And I'm nearing a sign on the freeway that tells me I'm close to my destination. And everything goes wrong. Everything feels wrong. I know what those lights behind me mean. <laughs> Why are they here? They aren't supposed to exist. I don't want this. And now they're telling me to stop. Why should I stop? They don't even know why I'm here. They have no right. I hear car doors slam shut. The car moves in front of me. A man steps out talking to me like he knows anything. I'm so confused. I just try to ignore it all and maybe it'll go away. But instead, three men tackle me into the side of the gravelly highway. They pick me up and handcuff me over the side of the police car. And they take forever. For what seems like minutes, hours, the three men are trying to handcuff me, twisting my arm in these really odd, contorted positions. I don't feel anything. I just stare complacently at the beauty in the sky as they talk amongst themselves. <coughs> Finally, they accomplished the task of securing my relaxed hands. <laughs> <laughs> they fit a, tr a plastic trash bag around my waist, <laughs> put me into the front seat of the car. <laughs> What's going on? Why is this happening? My whole world begins to crash around me. My reality, my entire existence seems to contradict itself. I'm in utter confusion. They attempt to talk to me. I can't understand anything they're saying. Idiots. <laughs> but I comply to what is happening in the moment. And they ask me, escort me out of the car and into the hospital. The cuffs are uncomfortable behind me, and at the first chance I get, I try to slip out of them. And they tackle me. <laughs> Thinking that I am some danger. <sighs> they lay me on the stretcher bed, and for a second time, I try to free myself from this uncomfortable position. And again, they tackle me. <laughs> this time, tying me down, face down, on the feet of the stretcher bed. And they're still trying to question me, and I'm starting to understand what they're saying. And then all of a sudden, BAM! Like, like a parachuter without a parachute, I fall back into reality. And it hurts. My entire body hurts. I'm bruised all over. My feet hurt so bad. And I feel an incredible amount of guilt. But I accept the responsibility of my actions, and I cooperate with the officers. They take me to the station, test me, interrogate me and then take me off to jail. And on the ride up in the police car, still with my hands cuffed behind my back, no longer naked, I have acquired a hospital gown. I see the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen in my entire life. The sun rising over Mount Shasta. The colors are stunning, and it takes my breath away. And I want to cry, and I think to myself, at least I got to see this.
address because I haven't had my opportunity. I would just like to say, big, hard, throbbing, hot, he comes pretty cock. Yes. <laughs> Jack, can you delete that from the movie version? <laughs> it's going straight on YouTube. We spoke previously about that little incident that happened 6,300 years ago, approximately, and the ramifications of it, which we are still living with today. The creation of that collective egoic entity that thrives and survives only because of the urge to separate and the choice to fear. Indigenous cultures from all over the world have prophesied that this time on this earth, the world as we know it is about to come to an end. But they've said how it ends and what that leads to is up to us. A fortnight, two weeks, <laughs> prior to, uh, I believe it was, prior to 9-11, the elders in Hopi land came up out of the kibas, and they said, you know how we've been telling you that it's the 11th hour? Well, it's not the 11th hour anymore. This is the hour. And we are the ones we've been waiting for. The next stage of human evolution is not, let me repeat that, it is not inevitable. But for the first time, for the first time ever, in the story, of this world, we have the ability to make a conscious choice. And if we don't make that choice, well, biology teaches us that a species is only evolves when it's compelled to, when it's a matter of evolve or perish. Who is going to make that choice? You are. Who are you? You are consciousness that has become conscious of itself. I Osiris, Om Nathanas, Ta, Allah, Munde, do offer this hymn to you, Hathor, blue-lidded daughter of the dawn, golden lady of the mountain, carrier of your father's wisdom. Let an old man lay in your arms. Let him look last on love's face, breathing in love's breath. I live in light a million years. The sun rises or sets, it matters not. For here is ecstasy in death and certainty in life. We are gods in the body of God. Truth and love our destiny. So go forth and make something beautiful of this world. And in doing so, set up a light in the darkness.
others? <laughs> See? What's your truth? What's your truth? What's your truth? What's your truth? Money back? <laughs> Speak to us. I spoke in my own. Well, I want to just talk about Emergence, the show, and my experience with Emergence. We've been meeting for what, two months, three months? Three. Three? More. More? More. Once a week? I don't know. Time is really bad for me, but it's been a while, basically. And it was long enough and hard enough to where <clears throat> I wanted to quit. And at one point I did. But fortunately I didn't miss a meeting. I just quit for like four days. <laughs> Basically, when you get a group of guys together and you're like, okay, let's create a play. Let's all write it together and let's all co-direct it. <laughs> okay. So that's what we're up against. <laughs> Tony knows, Tony knows. I was there. But it's, um, but I'm really glad that I did come back and I'm glad that I'm here now. And we never, we didn't know what Joseph was going to say tonight at all. Honestly, None of it. Neither did Joseph. It is amazing. <laughs> and I'm so happy that Joseph said what he said tonight. And now I'll always trust him to channel. <laughs> but during the rehearsal, I didn't really trust him. I didn't know what he was going to say. I didn't know what was going to Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. I'm done. <laughs> I said blah, blah, blah to somebody and they quit the show. That's how bad it got. <laughs> so, but that's my spiel. We're glad you're here. I'll yes. take off where Thank Francesco you. let off and uh, continue. Thank you. <laughs> He's a guy. You know, he's going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, the beauty of allowing. Uh, everybody's egos and everybody's world cosmology, their mythologies, their personal spiritual practices, their trips, their trips, to have acceptance within a group that is a model for us having to live together in the world. We can't do it here in this spiritual community. We you know, get up and walk out every time somebody comes up and says something that turns us off or triggers us. We don't have any way of dealing with that. Yeah, we're not going to survive as a culture, as a, as a race. So being human to me, as my emergence, was dealing with my stuff as a, as a man, but also learning how to deal with other people's stuff and hold, it, hold the energy, hold it together in some way through the ups and downs that we had in this group uh, of us all feeling at one time or another like, shit, is this really relevant? I mean, is it necessary that we even do this? How many times do we do back this Up till tonight, today, this afternoon, we rewrote it. But we trusted. We trusted that what our truth was was inevitably going to come out. And so we can get up in front of you and present something in a theatrical way, but, in, but essentially it is our story of our truth and it is a model for connecting with the community so that we can offer ourselves as men and as humans. generation and you know I am so thankful for 
all these men here to have shown me what it means to be a man, you know, because I didn't get that from my father. And it's nice that I can find a father in, the, in every one of these men and really come into my emergence. What I hope you women would like to see us as men emerge into. Yeah. to thank Madame Chasta for what you've given me since I moved here in September because I never I never knew that I could live the kind of life that I'm living now and I never knew that this well of abundance was in the world and now that I've found it I just want to give it to you I want to mm -hmm. give it to everyone I meet and uh, I work for you these you people who I barely know who I love so much when I when I'm at work and I have a rock that I, I, can, I can't move it. I think of what I want for you and I can move it then. And that's the truth. And uh, so thank you for helping me find all of this. synchronicity than uh, full involvement in the, the actual planning of the play uh, since the rehearsal result took place and then uh, I could not uh, come here for the most part. 
Um, but the synchronicity is that I was called into the play uh, just as I was uh, going through a process of uh, working on, you know, men's group issues. Uh, so it was, I just felt like I was participating in this uh, larger pattern. So we're, we're talking here about our individual emergences, uh, but in fact, uh, you know, our individual emergences, I, in my experience, is part of a, a larger emergence I see in uh, men in the community. Uh, and, uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps it is a synchronicity that we are having this play today, as Joseph said, in um, the spring, which is the, uh, you know, the, the natural celebration of uh, resurrection, the emergence of, of man from the cauldron, from the underworld. So, um, I hope that, uh, you know, that, that larger pattern that we're, that, you know, we can all fully participate in uh, to our own varying degrees and uh, produce something that is hopeful for our times. Thank you. Um, emergence for me was a chance to explore an area of my life that I've never really explored before, mm -hmm. as young as I am. Um, and that's my maleness, <coughs> masculinity. And it's been a really, really intense journey. You know, even, even now, you know, it feels so great, but I'm sitting here with this throbbing sore throat, and it's I've worked through so much stuff. I've worked through so many things I didn't know were there. And, and it was really great to share that with all these men. I've made a lot of friends here. Um, it was really great to share my truth with them. You hear theirs. A hand for Day Song. Yeah, I did. I've had a lot, and tonight I'm kind of struggling with um, expressing my emergence and expressing what the show or working with these guys has um, given me. I am circumstances in my life. I am going through huge change um, because I wanted a huge change in my life for a long time. And with the support, being around males and men and sharing ideas and sharing what they feel about things that I felt ashamed about. And really for the first time I really asked and talked about it. And it's like the shame of being a male is leaving. And it's amazing because and what I thought was so shameful is really just everything becomes more peaceful and relaxed. You know, it's not yeah. a big deal anymore, whatever <laughs> issue happened to be. <laughs> <laughs> and just, um, I don't know, just, you know, everybody's just... <clears throat> instead of looking for myself through a female, it's like, well, here I am. Yeah. Um, right here. Oh. I don't feel, I'm not looking for a feminine or a masculinity. It's like I'm becoming myself, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, it, it didn't, it wasn't planned this way, but the, the painting ended up looking like. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
amazing way. Well, they started in, in groups. Well, the first figure and then the emergent figure in the center. It's totally As soon as Tony joined the group, came out and took on the features of, of Tony, who was expressing in the group at that time these deep things that he was going through and like, who am I and what am I going to be? And as he was doing that, the, the figure emerged in the painting. Wow. 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 He said he wouldn't finish the third one until I fully emerged. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the third figure is not fully there because it is part of that mystery mm. yeah. that we don't know what that emergence is, but it's what keeps us stepping forward. Mm. There is a complete emergence, I guess. It's always <laughs> First time you said that it looked like Tony, I thought you were going to move out Tony Green. And I'm like, nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like other Tony. <laughs> the emergence, to me, I feel, uh, I'm going to do this in about 75 seconds. And I feel uh, like the double helix that's in our DNA. In the genetic male and female. I feel like what happened tonight was a tenth as good as it was tonight before you came here tonight to make it what it was. And the new guru of this new tribe that we want to be is you, not us, not the male. We, we, we did a great thing tonight, we did our part, but it's, it's what you have given us tonight. Because like I said, we, we were doing this show and my emergence was, you know, we've talked about surviving. I mean, I didn't know if I would survive what didn't feel authentic to me about this thing because I had such high expectations. And tonight, like I say, ten times as much authenticity came through because you know, you were here to, to make love with this small thing that we brought. And so I just want us, I think, instead of uh, posing a question to be answered, I just want us to let you know our vulnerable thanks for what you are at this moment. Thank you. I'd like to pull us men for a moment into circling the energy. So just. to complete us and come in any way you would want to love us in this vulnerable place that we feel right now, please come and give us a hug, give us a hug right now if you'd like.
really participate and, yeah. and appreciate and celebrate this maleness that we have all been a part of for so many years on this earth. And it was no small thing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.